Hey YouTube, welcome to another episode of Mike's Mike. I'm going to do something a little different this time and try and open up a discussion about two games that have impacted me more than just about any other. I hope you guys enjoy. Morality is defined as the principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong, or good and bad behaviour. By that definition, a truly moral person is one who would not only be able to distinguish what the right action is, but choose it in any given situation. Where morality becomes complicated, however, is in figuring out what the right decision is. I'm sure everyone would agree that the world and the people in it are what we might call morally grey. That is to say that no one is purely good or purely evil. Rather, people make both good and bad decisions, generally in pursuit of what they see as the moral good, but often misguided. This then becomes a question of one's ethics and the combination of them into a person's own moral code. Both Undertale and The Last of Us have done a fantastic job telling stories that highlight the different shades of morality and push the average gamer to re-examine what they consider to be good in the context of games in real life. This video will contain heavy spoilers for both Undertale and The Last of Us, and I'd urge anyone who hasn't played these games to go play them before continuing this video. No other games have struck this particular chord with me in recent memory, and both are worth the time put into them. The Last of Us puts us in control of Joel, a father who loses his daughter during an outbreak of a deadly viral disease that causes people to turn into what amounts to zombies. Years pass and we see Joel attempting to move on with his life in this new world order, working as a black market courier. He is then tasked with delivering an infected adolescent girl, around his deceased daughter's age, to a civilian militia in the hopes of curing the infected or at least vaccinating what's left of the population. We travel through the country and observe how different people survive in the wake of the breakdown of society, from a whole town guarded and sealed off from the rest of the world to scavengers who will lie and cheat just to survive. Joel, and by extension, we the player, See the way survival has become an imperative that supersedes everyday morality, even for us. A player assuming the role of Joel will have no problem killing his fellow man. It's how the game has to be played. Until we play as Ellie in the winter section of the game. Her whole section of the game where we're taking care of a sick and near-death Joel and simultaneously dealing with David and the cannibal population is a fantastic break as it leads us to a character with a similar but still different set of morals. Ellie and David are actually quite similar. Two people willing to do whatever it takes to ensure their survival, and the survival of those closest to them. The only difference is where they draw the line. For Ellie, this means hunting, stealing, killing people who threaten her are all perfectly fine. And as a player character, fittingly, this is likely the action many of us would take in a post-apocalyptic scenario. For David, however, revenge killing and cannibalism have become acceptable. He sees it as necessary and right in order to take care of himself and his own. As the player, many of us would have had a problem with Ellie or Joel eating another human, but killing the uninfected is okay, because if you didn't, you'd die. There's no moral dilemma there. The real moral dilemma comes from the game's ending. Joel discovers that Ellie would not survive the procedure to extract any sort of cure from her, and takes action to recover her. During this he kills many of the Firefly's military, but also several unarmed people, including doctors and nurses, a no doubt highly sought after commodity in this world. Joel's decision to rescue Ellie can be seen as both selfish and selfless. For Joel and the player, Ellie represents the daughter that he lost, 
and losing her again is not an option. For Ellie, this decision could be seen as selfless as Joe risks his own life for her. But she is unconscious for the whole thing. She has no knowledge of Joel's actions, and if she did, the decision to either save herself and doom humanity would then rest on her. And if she willingly chose to go with Joel, Ellie would then be seen as an inherently selfish character for putting herself above humanity. After successfully rescuing Ellie, the two depart for the sealed off village owned by Joel's brother. Ellie asks Joel why they left the fireflies and Joel lies to her, telling her that there was no cure. Days pass as they make their way to the stronghold and upon arriving, Ellie asks one more time for an explanation. Joel offers nothing new and the game ends on Ellie reluctantly accepting this with an Okay. This is a controversial ending as it shows the characters the player has controlled through all this making a, what I would call a purely selfish choice. Saving one girl at the expense of the rest of humanity. But after playing through the game, I had to ask myself if I would have done anything differently in that situation. What did it say about me that I wouldn't? Gamers like to have the option to choose the fate of their protagonist, and the fact that Naughty Dog chose to tell a story the way they did made for a powerful ending. That ending stuck with me for days after. In fact, the only game to have as much a moral impact on me is a recent indie hit. Undertale. Okay, so look, the internet has gone crazy for Undertale since its release in September 2015. And it's not hard to see why. The charming music, the simple graphics, the battle mechanics, and its emphasis on the impact of player choice. Long ago, humanity was at war with monsters. And after an event, the humans overpowered the monsters and sealed them away in the underground. You play a young human who fell down the hole into the underground and just wants to make their way back home. This is a game where fighting is an option instead of a requirement. Every enemy requires a different set of strange actions to overcome, from flexing contests with horses, to stealing a teenager's ice hat, to a dating simulation with a pun-hating skeleton, and much more. The game can be played one of three ways. You can choose not to kill a single monster in the game. Choosing words over raising your fists and continuously dodging attacks in a series of ever-changing bullet hill style mechanics. This results in what the internet has dubbed the true pacifist ending. You can choose to try to spare some and kill some. This, depending on your choices in the game, will result in one of many neutral endings, with little to no option of changing the course of the story without a reset. And finally we come to what the internet has morbidly, but accurately dubbed the genocide run, which as its name implies involves killing every single last living thing. The problem with this storytelling mechanic is how much people miss out on each playthrough. If you kill a single monster, some of the game's most rewarding friendships and funniest moments are not available to you. If you kill everything, towns become deserted and almost all of the game's quirky dialogue that is reminiscent of games like Earthbound suddenly disappears. And if you save every single person, you get what people consider the true ending. But with so many complications on the way, without attacking there's no chance to level up and increase your HP, meaning you really have to be good to survive and have a constantly full inventory. The game is designed in such a way that if you kill an important character, then regret and reload a save, it remembers. This creates an eerie Big Brother experience where you feel as though your every move is being watched and judged, and can cause you to alter the way you play the game. Undertale is a game like no other RPG. In a genre where killing to progress is the norm, this is a game that makes you feel like a piece of shit for attempting to play according to the everyday RPG convention of kill first, take their loot afterward. I'd argue then, that the idea of choice in Undertale is flawed as it berates you for one decision and praises you for another. 
As gamers, we are expected to fail in the task of not killing anything, thereby requiring another playthrough to experience the true ending. This wouldn't be a bad thing in itself, as many games require a second playthrough for a completionist, especially older 8-bit Nintendo games. My problem with it is that the game makes you feel bad for something you have no choice about in other games. Those Pokemon you caused to faint? Those stray dogs that became tame? Those Goombas that you stomped? The elites that you assassinated? The soldiers that you sniped? Undertale tells you that you should have spared those enemies, that you should have had mercy. But that's a choice that you don't have in a normal game. And still, Undertale makes you regret every time you've picked up a controller throughout your life better than any anti-gaming spokesperson could ever hope to. I also take some issues with Undertale's combat mechanic. During the course of the game, every monster, with the exception of some members of the main cast, will attack you. Well sensible arguments have been made that the monsters don't realise that what they are doing will hurt the human. Honestly, what about a flexing contest with a hippocampus causes serious bodily harm? But some enemies have attacks that are unambiguously attacks, such as spears. And the fact remains that intentional or not, unless you kill, spare or outmaneuver them in some fashion, monsters will continue shooting comical bullets at you until you die. You, a small chicken. If the message of the game is that fighting back against things that are actively killing you is a moral evil, I'm not sure that I agree. In a genocide run, the more monsters you kill, the fewer you will encounter. You have to go out of your way to fight them. What if in a pacifist run a similar mechanic was employed, the nicer you were, the fewer monsters would try to fight you. They might initiate conversations or ask you to perform silly tasks, maintain the fun, twitchy gameplay, but in the context of a friendship not a fight. Just a thought. The fights with Toriel and Asgore also seem to undermine the message of total pacifism. When Toriel fights you, your first instinct is to either run or to show mercy. If you run, you cannot progress. You may go back to her home for a while, try to go to sleep, stay with her, but the game will come to a standstill. If you try to show mercy, Toriel refuses, and the game reinforces the futility of this attempt by keeping our name text white instead of yellow, the game's indication that a monster can be spared. While there is a monster early on that hints at your need to spare someone whose name is white, it takes quite a few attempts to do so with Toriel. Enough that players new to the game might think it is impossible, and end up killing her because they think that it is required to progress, or killing her by accident during the battle. Killing Toriel changes the course of the game irreversibly, and this reinforces the message that in this game, fighting and killing are bad. While quite a harsh finger wag directed at unwitting gamers, that would be all good. Except for Asgore. The fight with Asgore is inevitable, like the fight with Toriel, and similarly, you as the player are told that showing mercy is not an option, quite literally, as Asgore destroys your mercy bar. The logical conclusion then, would be that the solution to the fight with Asgore would be similarly non-violent. Perhaps you have to reconstruct your mercy button, or dodge his attacks for a certain period of time, or even reload the save a particular number of times. Nope. You just have to wail on him until another character interrupts the fight. So the moral is, never ever fight. Except in this one instance where you just have to because we said so. Well, it is possible in a true pacifist run where all main characters have been correctly befriended, the Asgore fight is subverted. On any other run, even a true pacifist run, the fight with Asgore is unavoidable, and the only solution to it is to fight. I feel as if this kind of compromises the message, but maybe that's just me. I almost wonder what Undertale's creator, Toby Fox, had in mind when crafting this within the game, when there is so clearly a right and wrong choice. If you play Undertale correctly, then does that mean you're playing every other game wrong? Or is the point that the correct choice is not to pick up the controller at all? Do gamers really deserve the guilt trip for murder and violence that game developers require for progression? I feel as though this wagging finger is directed at the wrong side of the gamer. Developer duality. The reason for comparing The Last of Us and Undertale is a simple one. 
Both deal with death and the choices people make. Joel makes choices throughout the game to protect Ellie and, for right or wrong, puts his love for her as a father above what would seem to be the greater good. In the course of saving Ellie, Joel takes away what may well be humanity's last hope for a future free of the infected, by basically destroying the best equipped and most protected medical facility in the world, killing many armed and unarmed people, and stealing what is likely the only viable source of a vaccine. Undertale asks you, the player, to make the choice that Joel could not, to put the good of all monsters ahead of what would make you happy. Although the player technically can do the opposite, the game pushes the player to protect all the monsters in the game, repairing the damage of a decade old war in the process. However, if you make all the correct choices, a child's love for their parents directly endangers humanity by shattering the barrier that separates the human and monster worlds. Much as the characters of Undertale would like you to believe the destruction of the barrier is good for everyone, we see throughout the game the monsters attacking a small child, and the small child having to outmaneuver them and spare them. If the monsters say hello by hitting each other in the face, then I can't see peace being a feasible option. But the alternative for Undertale? Save yourself, or put yourself above others, and you deprive yourself of some of the most charming characters in any video game ever. It's kind of... fucked, right? I'd just like to end this by reiterating that The Last of Us and Undertale are both 100% must plays and two of the best games I've ever played, ever. Period. I just take issue with what it means for my mortals. Until next time, I'm Mike, this is Mike Mike, catch you